Your Airbnb setup is good, but it could be better. Both for the guest experience and for your day-to-day -day operations. We've set up dozens of short-term rental properties, both for clients of ours and properties of our own. And we've done improvement projects that ranged from major overhauls to minor adjustments in short-term rental properties. A good short-term rental setup is a balancing act between good guest experience and streamlined operation. And finding that right balance can be tricky. So today we're sharing 10 things I wouldn't even really call them mistakes, but 10 things that we've seen when onboarding a new client that were a great idea, but could have been even better with just a few small tweaks. It's great that you organized all your kitchen cabinets, but it would be even better if you chose to label them all. Your short-term rental guests are not exactly incentivized to keep your kitchen cabinets organized. But if you add labels to all the shelves and the drawers in your kitchen, then it's more obvious to guests that there is a place for everything and they might try and seek out the right place to put things back. And if that doesn't work, at least your cleaning team or your inspectors will know where to put things back. Labeling cabinets also helps us quickly realize if something has gone missing. If you see the spot for the toaster and there's no toaster there, easy to trigger you to go look for it. Yeah, chances are it was just put back in the wrong spot or maybe they thought that it was broken when it wasn't and threw it in the trash can. Yeah, true story. On the toaster in the bottom of a trash can once, brought it back in the house, plugged it in, worked just fine. We know that there can be a lot of personal preference involved when you're choosing items for your kitchen, but if you want to take the stress out of trying to decide between all of the different options out there, then you can grab a free copy of our sample inventory using the link in the description below. Another kitchen item, it's great that you bought cutting boards, but it would be even better if you bought ones that were dishwasher safe and a darker color. People don't like to hand wash dishes when they're on vacation. I don't even like to hand wash dishes when I'm at home. But we learned this lesson the hard way when we were setting up our short-term rental property, Saguaro in Arizona. And we bought this really nice wood salad bowl and some nice wood cutting boards. Then we came back to the property after a couple months and realized that all that stuff had gone through the dishwasher quite a few times. Yeah, it was ruined. It wasn't looking good. We've become big fans of this black polygranite set from Target. The dark color hides any potential food stains and they're dishwasher safe. Yep, you can wash those over and over again. And this is actually the set we've chosen to use at our own house. Refillable soap dispensers are great, but it would be even better if they were translucent and had a wide mouth top. Refillable soap dispensers just look so much nicer than the disposable kind with fish or shells or dogs on them. So. If you've replaced the disposable ones, you've taken a step in the right direction. But when we're outfitting a new short-term rental property, or if one of those soap dispensers is ready to be replaced, we always choose an option that is either transparent or translucent and has sort of a wide mouth top for easy refilling. And another point here is we like to pick bottles that are transparent. It's easy then to just glance at them, whether it's our cleaners, inspectors, or us, know that they need refilled without you know picking them up, trying to figure out how much left inside. It's just sort of a visual cue, so it's easy to forget to refill a soap dispenser if you can't see that it's almost empty or that even it's halfway empty or something like that. And the same goes for shampoo bottles. We really like these plastic sort of faux amber glass looking bottles with a pump top and they're just transparent enough or translucent enough uh, to know and to have that visual cue that they need to be refilled. We'll leave some individual links to these items in the video description below. So it's great that you bought a nice looking couch, but it would be even better if you could comfortably seat the amount of guests that you intend to host. We see this a lot, you know, small couches with a big occupancy. And I get that sometimes those big oversized sectionals can feel a little bit clunky if you're going for more of a clean, modern design. But what it really comes down to is guests want to be able to relax in your living room. Keep that in mind when you're picking out furniture. If you're dealing with a small space, try and look for something that has a deep seat option so that even though there's not a lot of width, you can still kind of curl up and get comfortable. It's great that you bought a smart lock for your front door, but it would be even better if you had an emergency lock box outside with a spare set of keys. We've had smart locks fail on us. Sometimes the batteries go dead. Sometimes it's just operator error and guests sort of throw up their hands and can't figure it out for some reason. In the case of user error, thankfully we do use smart locks so we can usually just open it remotely from our phones. But if it's not user error and it is some sort of malfunction with the lock itself, it's nice to have that spare set of keys and that saved us a trip over most of the time late at night to help a guest get into the house. Or worst case scenario, having to call a locksmith if you're not around. If you're still using a traditional lock and key for your front door at your short term rental, 
there's definitely some room for improvement. We like the Slage Encode and Quick Set Halo Locks. Both of these allow us to remotely set codes for guests or members of our team. And then as I mentioned before, we can also unlock the door remotely in case of user error, like on New Year's Eve when we got a text at 10 p.m. How do we open the door with the code 4234? We give photo check-in instructions and then there's this numeric keypad there with the numbers and... You type four, push, push, two, push, push, push. three, four. I don't know what was going on there. New Year's Eve, maybe. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It's great that you have a coffee maker, but it would be even better if you provided the coffee and other supplies. At our managed properties, we usually have a Keurig and a drip coffee maker, and then we supply a complimentary set of pods for the Keurig, as well as creamer and sugar. We do have a couple of clients that have very strong negative opinions about Keurig machines. So in those instances, we have a drip coffee maker. Those couple instances are midterm furnished rentals, and then for those, we buy a full bag of local, you know, kind of boutique coffee for guests to use. You had a hard time describing that coffee because he doesn't drink coffee. Not a coffee drinker, <laughs> but there's a fancy coffee store and then we have to go to it. <laughs> Just a regular coffee store. <laughs> Whatever. So this summer, we went to a family reunion in Gulf Shores, Alabama. It was really fun. We all rented condos in the same condo building. And the condo that we stayed in, it was great. It was clean and it was comfortable, but we were pretty disappointed, or at least I was pretty disappointed that there was no coffee provided, even though there were pictures of the coffee maker, you know, plastered all over their listing. I don't drink coffee, so I couldn't care less, but there wasn't a single pot of coffee in the place, which was a bit of a letdown. It was just disappointing to not have that advance notice because we went to the store on the way in and so we had to make another trip back to the store. But it wasn't just about the coffee, there were also some other pretty basic, like essential supplies missing, like trash bags and dish soap. And so we had to take an extra trip to the store to buy all of those things for our really short, I think like two night stay. We think it's a good idea to kind of fully stock your rental property. But if for whatever reason you choose not to, just make sure you're fully transparent with guests so there's not surprises when they arrive. It's great that you bought nice pillows, but it would be even better if you had different levels of firmness for your guests to choose from. We've gone over this in our bedroom setup series, but we like to have two levels of firmness, and that's usually a softer down alternative type pillow and then a firmer memory foam. In that setup video, we asked you guys to leave us a comment and let us know what your preferred pillow arrangement was, how many, what type, and the general consensus is kind of what we thought. Everybody has a little bit of a different preference, and some of them were very specific. We know we're not going to please everyone, but at least with the choice here, try and please as many people as possible. It's great that you bought a smart TV but it would be even better if you provided some sort of live TV streaming option. We always are on the lookout for TVs that have the built-in Roku interface. It's simple and easy to use and kind of consistent across our brand. Most of the time you can find these at Costco, Amazon, or Walmart. Top three choices where we get them. Sometimes Best Buy too. We usually shop around when we're looking to buy and see who's running sales or who has the best deals at the time. But typically in our experience, Costco has the easiest return policy just in case something goes wrong in the future. We know it's 2023 and a lot of people have their own streaming service logins, but what we find is most people don't have a live TV option. And this comes into play for sports or live news or sitcoms. We think it's you know a fairly small investment for a nice touch that most guests will get some use out of. In most of our properties, we offer YouTube TV. There are a couple of other options like DirecTV Now, Hulu Live, Sling. Just one tip, if you do pick YouTube TV, make sure to make a note in your house manual or somewhere where your guests will read that it's not to be confused with the standard YouTube app. We've had some confusion with guests in the past over that. We had a hard time kind of trimming this list down to just 10 items because we have pretty strong opinions when it comes to setting up short-term rentals. We've been through it enough times. Uh, this last item we didn't implement for quite some time and now that we've done it, we're never gonna look back to the alternative solutions.
It's great that you locked off a hall closet for your spare linens and turnover supplies, but it would be even better if you used an electronic handle. We've had smart lock front doors. Those are kind of expensive, but we first saw a electronic handle on a property that we took over from one of our competitors. We've had a couple of clients move over from that company to our company over the past year or so, and we noticed whenever we were doing these onboardings that they had this electronic doorknob on the supply closets, and it was a really good idea. The alternative solution is to have a key lock and then what we would do is put that key in a lockbox somewhere on the property for our cleaners to access but as a portfolio has grown we've really become very anti-key except for that one emergency key the emergency key is one thing but definitely don't want keys part of our daily operations so we switched to this keypad handle and haven't looked back and we'll leave a link to our favorite one in the description below now it's time for another walkthrough of your property or maybe a mental walkthrough if you're managing it remotely. Keep an eye out for areas that are good, but places where there's an opportunity to make them even better. Either from a guest experience standpoint or from an operations standpoint. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.